Hello everyone, today I'm going to review the Fujifilm X-T5 after almost a year of heavy usage. My name is Andre Dima, I'm a professional travel photographer and video maker, and I used the X-T5 in the past year for my work and personal use almost daily. I traveled with it in multiple countries and used it for all sorts of projects. I took it hiking, used it in different temperatures, light rain and dusty conditions, from the beaches of Valencia to the north of Spain, in Rome and much more. Let's start with the thing that disappointed me the most and that is the build quality. For the first 6 months I was pleased with it because the paint hold up better than the one on the X-T4. And almost a year later I think it still does but I was hoping for more. Some of you know I got the camera with the screen loose and I never had time to send it for warranty. The good thing is that it didn't got worse and I got used to it. The bad news is I have to send the X-T5 in for repairs for another issue, my shutter dial is not working properly anymore. Sometimes it jumps from the setting I am in to 8000 bulb and until I move the dial it keeps doing this and if I press the dial lock it does the same thing. First I thought this was a firmware problem but I have the latest and talk to other X-T5 users and they don't have this issue so I'm a bit disappointed in the build quality of the X-T5. The rest of the camera functions perfectly and I had no other problems when it comes to build quality. The car door works like in its first day, the battery door the same, the buttons have no issues, the screen and EVF work well, no problems except for the dial. It's a good thing I still have a bit of warranty. I'm not saying all X-T5s will have this problem, maybe it is just my unit, but it is still a disappointment, especially after I sold all my Nikon gear and switched professionally to Fujifilm. Maybe I should go back on using two systems. I love Fujifilm cameras, even with their quirks. For my kind of work they are more than enough, but I still need them to be reliable. Regarding the ergonomics of the camera, it is a big step up from the X-T4, just because the grip is bigger and it has a better shape, making it easy to carry the camera around for many hours without the need of an extra grip. I used the camera on the crowded streets of Rome for more than a week daily from morning to night, hand holding the camera most of the time and my hands never got tired, yes it could have been a bit larger but it still is a big improvement over the X-T4. I love the button placement on the X-T5 and of course the dials. I got used to using the dials for video and photo and I quite like it. I know not many people like the dials for video, but they are not that hard to use. Talking about staying out all day, battery life is great. I always have two or more batteries with me, but I only had to change the battery after almost a full day of work, and that for me is a big plus. When it comes to those 40 megapixels, yes, with good glass there is a difference compared to 26. Another thing not many talk about is that you can see the difference better after you start editing your files. In Capture One, if you add a bit of structure, you will see more details than on the 26 megapixel files. I like high megapixel cameras and I need them for my work, but as I said multiple times, 24, 26 megapixels are more than enough for any type of photography. I don't think one should buy this camera only for the increase in megapixels. And I think Fujifilm should have added the option to shoot at different resolutions in RAW, but sadly they did not. I hope they will add it in a firmware update, but that is a long shot with Fujifilm these days. With the addition of the ISO 125, the X-T5 has now better dynamic range if you need to push your files, and most of my work is at this ISO. This is one of the reasons I switched from the Nikon Z7 II to the X-T5, they have almost the same performance, yes, the ISO 64 and the full frame sensor on the Z7 II will give you better results, but not by much. And again, this depends on you. When it comes to low light or using high ISO, I do this mainly for my street photography, which I consider part of travel. 
we all know that the noise on Fujifilm cameras looks good, and for street I don't care how noisy it is. But this again depends on you and what lens you are using. Yes, I don't care how noisy it is, because I care about the shot and how good it is. No photo won a contest or became famous for no noise or super sharpness. Regarding colors, I think the color science on the X-T5 is better than the one on the X-T4. In my opinion, colors are fuller and more vibrant, also the raw files are easier to edit. And for those that do events and need cleaner files, there are a lot of great bright lenses you can use, especially the two new Viltrox F1.2 Pro lenses. When it comes to autofocus for photography, after using the X-T4 for more than 2 years and now the X-T5 for almost a year, I can say there is a big improvement, especially in high contrast scenes and low light. The autofocus is more reliable and accurate, but this is going to be influenced by the lens you use. The better the lens, the more you will see the improvements Fujifilm made with this camera. Things got a lot better after the big 2.0 autofocus update. And after the release of the new GFX camera this fall, it seems we are going to finally get touch tracking on the new XT, XH and XS lines. When it comes to video, again depending on the lenses you are using, the autofocus is going to give mixed results. It is good and reliable with certain lenses, like the Viltrox 13mm f1.4, the Fujifilm 33mm f1.4 LMWR, the Tamron 17-70 f2.8, but you will also see an improvement when using older lenses not made for video, like the 23mm f2 WR or the 16mm f2.8 WR. The X-T5 has plenty of options and codecs for any type of work. You also have F-Log2 if you need more dynamic range. I actually used F-Log2 the most, even if you have to raise your ISO and get more noise. The noise from the files cleans up nicely in post. I think the X-T5 is more than enough when it comes to videos for YouTube and some commercial work. It all depends on your skill. When it comes to low light footage, if you put a bright lens on this camera, you will get great results. And if you go overboard with the ISO and get too much noise, as I said earlier, you can denoise in post and your files will look great. Regarding the IBIS on the X-T5, well for photography it is great, but don't forget to turn it off when you use a tripod. For video, it got improved a bit with the latest updates, but it is still not that great for moving shots. Regarding the camera wars, who has the better autofocus and full frame versus APS-C and all that jazz, after so many years of photography and professionally and so much more for personal use, the best camera is the one you like to use, the one you like to hold and grab when you go to work, the one that you think about when you use other cameras. No, this is not a relationship video. If you have enough experience, you will take great photos with any camera released in the last 10 years. And if you like it, it will improve your creativity. Yeah, a bit disappointed in the build quality, but overall a good camera that I enjoy using. I just wish it had the same build quality as my X-H2S. If this video was helpful, please like, subscribe and ring the bell to get notified when I release new videos. And if you want to support the channel even more, check out the links in the description. See you next time.